Hi, readers. It's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper. And today we're going to talk about the books I've already hauled in the month of October because there's a lot and there's a good reason. So September was my birthday month and I was away and doing different things, but I received a gift card from some people I do some work with, and it was a very substantial <laughs> gift card to Barnes & Noble, which I am so grateful for, and I had a few like reward dollars there too. So I was able to leverage that into quite a haul. I also got a couple of books from Book of the Month. I also got a couple of books that my daughter has given me to read because she liked them. And I also have one book that my partner bought that I might very well read. And she's already read it, like got it, read it. The next day was done. So I got another arc. I'm currently reading an arc. And then I got a few books on for the Amazon first reads, which is a free book every month. And then I got a couple on Kindle Unlimited. So let's talk about that now. And let's hope that I don't have very many the rest of the month. Although I am going on a trip to visit my sister in Arizona. And I am hoping we get to go to a bookstore or two or five, but we'll see. <laughs> So let's talk about these in the order in which they came in. I think that's probably the best solution. Uh, so the first book of the month club book that I chose was Dearest by Jackie Walters. This was the only one that really interested me. And it, it's pretty creepy, horror -y, I think. Oh, gosh, I don't have my glasses. Let me get my glasses on because otherwise I can't see a thing. Also, they are very dirty. All right. A new mom in need of help opens the door to her long estranged mother only to invite something much darker inside. So she's a new mom, new baby, not sleeping, husband is deployed, really struggling. And all of a sudden she opens the door one day and her mother's standing there. She didn't ask her to come and help. She just showed up. And so <laughs> it looks a little creepy. It seems a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, I would say creep, creep, creep. There weren't a lot of ratings on it, so I'm not sure how people are perceiving it yet, but I'm good with it. And then this one I've already read. I've read it twice. I may read it a third time, <laughs> but this is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Anyway, I, <laughs> I love Blake Crouch. I love this book. And I had recently watched the adaptation on Apple TV, which I liked a lot. I don't like it as much as I love the book, but I liked it a lot. So Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, almost everything he's ever written. I absolutely love it. So let's talk about what I bought from the BNN. I actually got this as well. <laughs> I've already read this. I have all three of them in this series on my ebook Kindle reading, but I realized that I had a desire to collect more of Blake Crouch. So I got this one for me. I also got this one for my son for his birthday. So this is book one of a, the Wayward Pine series. There are three of them. So this is about Ethan Burke, who is a secret service agent, and he's deployed to Wayward Pines, Idaho, to find out what happened to two missing federal agents. But as soon as he gets to Wayward Pines, he wakes up in a hospital later, not much later, and has no memory of what happened. And I think he has no driver's license, no wallet, no nothing. So nothing to identify who he is. So he's stuck in Wayward Pines for a bit. And Wayward Pines is not what you would consider your everyday small town. So let me just say that. And I loved this series. So I was super happy to get that with my gift card. Then I got a couple of um, mass market paperbacks, which I don't do often, but if you're going to leverage a gift card, they're cheap and they're fun. And I was in the mood for cozies. So I got two more Cleo coil books, which are the third, I think, and fourth in the series. I'm not sure. I think so. I've read the first two. This one got damaged in the shipping. So I was a little upset by that, but this follows Claire Cozy, who isn't that funny? Cozy, C O S I, but Cozy Mysteries, you know, got it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, Claire has a coffee shop, and I think it's in the New York area. It's been a while since I read one of these. And of course, 
murders continue to happen all around her and Claire is <laughs> involved in every time in trying to help somehow related to the murder per, murdered person. And there's a detective that is, uh, you know, kind of involved in helping Claire in many ways, maybe. So yes, to these, I'm so happy. I got a couple of cozies cause fall and cozies are like my jam. Then I went back a ways <laughs> and the reason it started with me wanting a book that was set in Budapest in the embassy where we worked and, and we lived nearby. So it started with the fact that I was like, you know what? I don't have murder in the CIA, which is not book one, two or three, <laughs> but I think I read this years ago, but I'm really just trying to remember if I actually did. Maybe I didn't. And my sister just told me about it, but nevertheless, I got this one and I think I can read it no matter if it's, you know, in the beginning of the book or not. I had a lot of friends who worked for that organization and I worked for some governmental organization. So I am ready to take that one on. But book one is actually Murder in the White House. I've stuck a book of the month club bookmark in here, which is way bigger than it needs to be, right? Anyway, this is book one, Murder in the White House. So I'd like to start with book one just to kind of get my feet wet. And I might take this one on an upcoming trip. And this one is about Lancert Blaine, who is the Secretary of State, and he's found strangled in the Lincoln bedroom. And then Ron Fairbanks is the White House counsel, and he's ordered to investigate. Of course, my neighbors decided to do their lawn. Of course they did. Okay. Um, so there's some rumors about the man who was killed, and they're just trying to figure out who did it, right? Of course they are. And then Murder on Capitol Hill is the second one in the series, Capital Crime series. And this one is about Senator Cale Caldwell and his blue blooded wife who have a lot of power on the Hill, but he's killed and um, he's killed at a champagne reception in his honor. So I think these would be a fun series to start. Should I have started them in September? Probably, but that's okay. I'm, I'm not worried about it. All right. Then I got one of my highly anticipated Hampton Heights by Dan Coys. I've never read anything by Dan Coys. You know, this was a cover buy for me. There is a creepy thing in there, a creepy creature and another one too. So 1987, six middle school paper boys are in the neighborhood uh, selling newspapers and freaks come out at night in Hampton Heights. That's all I want to know. I mean, really look at it. There's a freaking cat on the top of the H. I love that cover so much. So, so much. I also got The Hitchcock Hotel by Stephanie Rober, who, Robel, who was also on my highly anticipated reads list. This is about a Hitchcock Hotel that has been redone. He's founded it and manages it. Victorian house in the White Mountains that is dedicated to Hitchcock and some people come to stay there and I'm sure terribly creepy things happen. The problem I'm having is which one do I read first? I mean, really, this is a huge problem. And then I kind of went back in time and I got Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith. This one is like the beginning of this you kill for me, I kill for you trope that seems to be popping up a lot in the last few years. And I like that trope if it's done well. But what I had never done was read the original creator of this trope. I'm pretty sure she was, honestly. This was her debut novel, Strangers on a Train. And Paula Hawkins does an introduction. You can see that here to this novel. But I feel like Patricia Highsmith is someone I need to spend more time with. I did read The Talented Mr. Ripley a long time ago. I would like to consider her as somebody I would want to curate. And this will, you know, help me to decide that. So she um, was born in 1921 and passed away in 1995. So she's not uh, alive anymore, but her books live on as a legacy uh, for sure. She's written Deep Water. She's written The blunder. Uh, yeah, I could go on and on and on, but I wanted that one to keep forever because it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a trope classic. All right. That's all the books so far from my Barnes and Noble uh, order. There is one I pre-ordered. I will talk to you about it later when I do a second haul for the month, but uh, it's not coming in till the end of the month because it's not released yet. 
Then I got this one somewhere else. I don't even remember where. It may have been Amazon. Yes, it was Amazon because I also had a gift card from a friend of mine and she said, buy yourself a book. So I bought, I need you to read this by Jessa Maxwell. This is the author of The Golden Spoon, which I really enjoyed. I've read that twice, once for a book club and once um, just because, look, what happened to this one? Everybody was uh, bending improperly. So this one is about Alex Marks, who escaped to New York City for a fresh start, and she goes to the Bluebird Diner every morning to read the paper over coffee, and she's a copywriter and keeps to herself, and Frances Keene is an advice columnist, and she's murdered, and Alex's meticulously guarded world cracks because she authored the famous advice column, Dear Constance, Frances did. And her words guided Alex through some of her darkest times. That's all I want to know about this. I did enjoy Jessa Maxwell. It's a quick read, I'm sure. Again, what to bring to read on my trip, I don't know. But, whew. Oh, this was another Barnes & Noble one. Sorry, this one came, but it came later because it also wasn't released yet. So I got this one. Uh, the Last One at the Wedding by Jason Reculek. I have not read anything by Jason Reculek, but I have another book of his over there on my TBR, as you might have seen. This one is about a man named Frank who hasn't spoken to his daughter in years. And suddenly she calls and asks if he'd like to join her for her wedding to a very wealthy guy who this man, Frank, has never met. And he goes there and I, I'm guessing something goes wrong. The blurb on the back from Mary Kubica says it's tense and atmospheric and characters that draw you in immediately and keep a tight hold. Every father's worst nightmare. She couldn't put it down. I would love that too. Again, this kind of a short book. My partner got this. It came out the other day. This is Lisa Marie Presley's memoir, but it was finished by her daughter, Riley Keogh, because Lisa Marie passed away suddenly. And my, my love, Lisa, loves Elvis and grew up just loving Elvis and loves books about Elvis and, and anything that's Elvis adjacent. And so she really wanted to read this. She said it was very, very fast. And it was like she was sitting there talking to you. Lisa Marie. So it must be quite tricky to, to write the ending of a book that someone didn't finish, but I'm guessing it went well because she really, really liked it. Then I went to visit my daughter more than once and uh, we'll go again <laughs> more than once. I'm sure this month, I love spending my time over there. This is my little babies. I got these two while I was there, her little um, birth announcement cards. Aren't those cute? I bought this for Megan when she was pregnant. <laughs> And she was struggling to try to work and read and, you know, focus, you know, pregnancy brain is no joke. So she finished it the other day and she gave it to me to read. She wants it back. But this is a Mother's Murder Club mystery by Kate Ailes. This is about a woman who moves to uh, England and countryside living and then a dead body at their local antenatal class has them rethinking their life choice. And I guess that pregnant women solve the murder. Sounds perfect to me. And then her hubby bought this the other day and he read it and then she read it. And now they've given it to me horror movie by Paul Tremblay, who is hit and miss for me, but I'm hoping that this one is really, really good. A group of young guerrilla filmmakers in the nineties spend four weeks making horror movie, which is a disturbing art house horror flick. It's, it's released to the public, but just a little bit of it. And then this has this like completely crazy, like fan alignment and then some things start happening as a result. And I don't want to know a whole lot, except I'm going to give that a try again, short book. And then the other day I went to take my granddaughter and her, one of her best friends to orientation at the community college that they think they are going to go to. And I dropped them off and I had some hours to kill. So I went to have coffee and I went to the library and sat in that library, which I'd never been in before. It's a different county from us and just had a luxurious few hours by myself. And I found a couple little free libraries too, to be exact. So the first one I pulled out Laura Child's Egg Shooters, which again is a cozy, but this is a Cackleberry Club mystery. And I've never read anything by this author of this series. So I'm going to give that a try. So this is about Suzanne who owns the Cackleberry Club Cafe 
and is visiting her fiance, Sam Hazlett, at the ER on a quiet Sunday night, but then something occurs and there's violence and yeah. I love the tea shop mysteries. I do not love the scrapbook mysteries as much. We'll see how I feel about the cackleberries, but this is not book one, which I don't really care about. They usually give you a lot of information before you, but this one starts with eggs and purgatory if you're interested, but that's okay. I may or may not continue with that series, but I have a book from it. And then I got The Nest with by Cynthia Dupri Sweeney. And I feel like I didn't look because I haven't had time. I've been swamped, you guys, just swamped. But I feel like this was one of the ones I picked up from my library in a video I did months ago. And it's a loose end video for me. But I was going to, I tried a chapter and then was going to figure out which one to read. And I never went back to figure that out. But I think that this was one of them. So I guess this will be the one. I read because it came out of the little free library. So this one is about family drama. The Plum family have had a bunch of issues over the years, but they reach a breaking point and they gather in New York City to confront their charismatic and reckless older brother, Leo, who's come from rehab and he's endangered their trust fund. So they have to I guess, try to figure that out. So family, drama, saga. I love this cover, actually. I really, really love this cover. And then Amy Poehler praised this on the front of the cover. So yeah, I think this will be a good read. It's not in terrible shape. And I can pop it back in a little free library if I decide not to keep it, which I'm trying to unhaul some stuff too, obviously. Okay, so let's look at the digital stuff. So I'm currently reading on my Kindle, This Girl's a Killer by Emma Wells. This is an arc for me. It comes out later this month, and I'm almost done with it. It's been a pretty quick read for me. Uh, so it, it's been pretty well paced, and you know I read Kindle fast for sure. But this one is indeed about a woman who's a pharmaceutical salesperson, and she has a best friend, and a, her best friend has a little girl, and they're very, very close and have been for years and years and years. But you get the sense from the beginning that she's done something in her past, and she had a rocky family life. There's no question the setup is that she had a really tricky family life. So she escaped that and and came to some level of affluence as a result of her pharmaceutical sales. And then some things start to fall apart and you discover that she kills bad men. So she feels like she's, you know, doing the world a favor because she's getting rid of men who are doing terrible things to people. I won't say who, um, this reminds me a lot. It has a lot of Dexter vibes. If you've ever watched the series Dexter or read the books, which I have not read the books, but Dexter was a favorite series of ours for a long time. So it is definitely female Dexter vibes for me. And that's all I'm going to say about it now, but I'll do a review of it very soon because I'm going to finish it really quickly. And then I also got an arc of Kills Well with Others by Deanna Rayburn. This was a surprise to me that they said, yes, this does not come out until I think the spring of 2025. But this is, uh, all I know about it is second acts can be deadly. And this is the second in her series. And I have kills killers of a certain age on my shelf. So I would like to get to killers of a certain age in the next couple of months so that I can then get to this and finish it. So that is going to be exciting. Then for my Amazon first read, I got The Antiheroes by Jen Lancaster. This is about two women who have, uh, who are friends and have just boring white bread kinds of lives. And one day they witness something that makes them just like incredibly, I don't know, jazzed by the, <laughs> by the experience that is a little out of the ordinary for them. And so they then, I think, hire a person to help them like take care of themselves if something happens to them, or maybe they want to take care of other people. I don't know, but hence the boxing gloves. So they learn how to protect themselves. I also, because I wanted a spooky something this month and everybody talks about this book and recommends it for spooky books. I got this from Kindle Unlimited. This is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Not even kidding when I say everybody recommends this book. Emily St. John Mandel, um, 
blurbed it, but I think this is dark academia and somebody is killed and yeah, teenagers or maybe young adults in college. Sounds like a good thing to me. Then I also got this, which doesn't come out for a while, but I think I, I don't know how I got this. I don't, you know, I don't know, but it was cheap. Maybe it, it wasn't an arc. Anyway, I got A Very Bad Thing by J.T. Ellison. <laughs> I have another book by J.T. Ellison on my shelves. Have I read it? No. Will I read it soon? Maybe. This one has a ton of author blurbs at the beginning of it. Uh, this one is about, I think her name is, it's a weird name, Cordelia. Let me look. Columbia, Columbia Jones. She's, I told you it was a different name. Uh, Columbia Jones is a writer and she's been writing for a while and I guess successful. And she ends up going to a night, I guess, to feature her, talk about her new book. And somebody in the crowd terrifies her at seeing this person. It's, it's like, oh my gosh, what has happened to me? And then she's found dead after that. So I thought that would be a great read as well. You know, I guess I'm really looking for some thrill lately. And then this last one. Okay. I just read and reviewed The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. And I have said Frida McFadden is a solid writer. I Not always loving them for sure. I haven't rated them very highly, but I was talking about this. I think I posted my review on Facebook. And a friend of mine said that she and her partner love this series of books by Frida McFadden. She thinks these are the best and it's about to become a movie, a major motion picture. I had had this on my Kindle Unlimited once before a long time ago when it first came out. And I eventually just replaced it because I had come to my limit. I know you're not surprised to hear that. And I had to get rid of something. So I'd gotten rid of it and realized I didn't have it. But then I ended up popping another one off to be able to get this one. Cause I'm going to say that I trust my friend Tammy. And if she thinks this is good, then I'm going to give it a go at some point. But um, there are several of these and she said they have loved every one of them. So we'll see. And then on Everand, I am currently reading the gingerbread men by Joanna Corrance. I have five hours and 53 minutes left. I just started this yesterday, I think. This one was a book and you're like, why are you reading a Christmas book in October? Here's the reason. Melinda from A Web of Stories recommended I read this book a while ago. She did, I don't know if she still does this because I watch almost all of her videos, but I haven't seen one for a while. But she had a list of maybe five or six people in this one particular video and it was in the summer or maybe earlier. Uh, and she recommended two other booktubers, a book she thought we would like. And this was my recommendation, The Gingerbread Men. And it's a horror novel. And she said, read this like at Christmas or, in, you know, in the horror season or something, because, you know, it was like I said, spring or summer when she recommended it. I'm just eight chapters in, but I like it so far. I'm really, I'm really happy with it. So, okay. That is my current haul up through today. And we're going to try to calm it down a little bit in the next couple of weeks. But I still have birthday money. Like I have a lot of, but I could use my birthday money for something else, right? I don't have to buy books, but I did. I bought some books in a weak moment. I bought some books. In fact, that's my cup today. In a weak moment, I wrote a book. You see who it is? Margaret Mitchell. Yeah. So in a weak moment, I bought a bunch of books. And I'm glad that you're with me today to hear about them. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have read any of these or these authors, do let me know. Let me know what you're reading this month. You give me the best inspiration and you're the best community. So uh, thanks for being with me. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would, so you could be a part of this amazing community. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.